Okay, Mr. Palmer here with another video. Uh, this time talking about programming paradigms. Just quickly introducing different paradigms and looking at procedural languages, and then we will follow this one up with uh, looking at declarative languages and then um, finally object oriented programming. Okay, so this one is just basically looking at what are paradigms, what are procedural languages, why they're developed, and what the advantages and disadvantages of them. Okay. So first of all, we need to understand the word paradigm. Paradigm means a worldview, all right? And you will hear some computer scientists and lecturers talking about Weltanschauung, okay? That's my really bad German pronunciation. Um, basically, what that means is different people look at the world differently. And when you're creating a solution for somebody, you might look at it, look at the world in a different way and therefore choose a different tool set for solving that problem. OK, so uh, historically, there have been like different ways of looking at uh, the development of programming languages. So one way is looking at generations of languages where we started off with the first generation machine language, where uh, you programmed in uh, binary, let's say, uh, using the opcodes. So you were literally using the uh, instruction sets as understood by the CPU. Okay, this opcode, this data address, this this memory address, and you were manipulating like that. Obviously, that's very, very, very difficult way to program, very prone to errors, you know, it involves a lot of um, uh, doing dry runs and whatever beforehand to make sure your program will work. If you imagine in the days of the punch cards, this was uh, followed by the second generation of assembler making use of monomics um, to make it easier for humans to read that so replacing opcodes uh, with um, acronyms like add move etc um, then this was followed up by third generation of languages if you go look up these languages and you can see that with each successive generation you've got increasing abstraction what that means is that the programmer is having less to deal with the actual physicality of the computer and focusing more on problem solving. So you're moving away from knowing numbers and instructions in you know, the opcodes of the computer and moving further and further away to using higher level language like if, then, else to focus on the problem and trying to solve the problem. And that's followed up by fourth generation languages such as SQL which are very abstract in comparison to the hardware, then you're dealing in, you know, in, in terms of like select X from Y, uh, you know, very high level um, use of language in order to solve the problem. So you're, mo you're moving away from the computer in the first generation through to moving closer and closer to the problem you're trying to solve in the domain in the higher level languages, sorry, in the later generations. Another way of looking at it is some people talk about levels of languages, so low level languages. So the commands and the functions map to the processor functions. So you can see straight away that that corresponds to uh, the first two generations. We're talking about machine code and assembler. And then you've got high level languages where you have an abstraction from the hardware. So those are all the more kind of modern languages that we use to, um, to, to program. Uh, you know, when we also talk about low level, remember we're programming using instruction sets and often uh, CPUs like, for example, AMD and Intel x86 processors would have the same instruction set, but they would have also have a, a totally different internal um, functioning, All right? So there was kind of a bit of a portability of code there. So procedural programming. Uh, what you're looking at is it's a problem oriented approach to problem uh, to programming. So you describe the problem and you describe how you're going to solve it step by step, instruction by instruction. So your solution can then be divided into procedures which explain how to solve certain particular parts of the problem. And then you can call those procedures. Those procedures can call other procedures or those procedures can call themselves, for example, recursion. Uh, here's an example program in C. So you have your main uh, procedure, 
you've got two variables, first num and second num. You have another variable declared called the result. The result calls a procedure um, plus, which accepts, uh, which has two parameters. Okay, so first num and second num are passed to it. The result is calculated and returned, and then the answer is output on the screen. And so you you can see that there there's you know calling subroutines. You've got um, uh, you know the use of variables, etc. Okay, so the advantages of procedural programming uh, it's good for general programming. All right, uh, use of variables in general data structures and subroutines means that it can be applied to a range of problems in different domains. It's not domain specific. However, the disadvantages of it are that if you have a small change of requirements, you might need to have a large change uh, in terms of source code. Sometimes you might have to rewrite whole swathes of the program, right? And it's also difficult to reuse the code. You can't kind of, it's, it's, just more, it's not as easy to port parts of it around and use it, all right? So those are the questions for this, this little video. All right, the next one coming up now is gonna be talking about de declarative languages.